if it feels like cheesy to you, it's going to feel cheesy to them. Like, I think oh, part of this is, like, you have to be very authentic. I think that was one big thing that I noticed in, like, my application um, or, like, the, the file, my admissions file. Like, all the readers are like, oh, like, she really shows her personality. She's very authentic. Like, her personality shines through her essays. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to the College Lead YouTube channel. Today we have a very special guest, Kaylee. She is a sophomore at Stanford and she studies symbolic systems. She has a very unique experience with writing her college application essay and her major is also pretty unique. I bet you probably haven't heard of it before. So um, before we get started and dive into fun questions, could you introduce yourself to us? Yeah, definitely. So hello, my name is Kaylee. As Kristen said, I'm a sophomore at Stanford. Um, I went to high school. At, I went to Carlmont High School, which is like in the Bay Area, California. I'm a Bay Area native. Um, I live like 25 minutes from Stanford, so I'm super close to home. Um, I'm studying symbolic systems. That's a quirky major that only Stanford has. It's a combination between computer science and then psychology, linguistics, and philosophy. That's always a mouthful to say. I'm debating a major or concentrating in learning or HCI, which is human computer interaction. So I'm pretty interested in the intersection of tech and like people sciences. Um, and yeah, I think I covered all the bases. And I think like that is also something like that. I think people might try too hard to be something they're not or like try to like relate their life to like some like very big metaphor or something. Like just try to keep it like you. Like, just to start off with, uh, I know you mentioned that you had a sort of unique experience with college applications and writing the essay. Could you maybe tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. So my college application experience was a little bit like quirky, I guess, just because I felt like a lot of these college advice things talk about having like a spike or something that you're super passionate about. Uh, and especially for the common application that's 650 words and most people think of it as writing about like a long big thing about maybe like one aspect of you or one thing that you're super passionate about or like one defining story um, that kind of encapsulates you or your personality or your life or your background. I didn't really have that. I felt like growing up and also throughout high school I had a range of different diverse interests and um and just like I didn't really have one one defining moment or one defining thing constantly in my life that was uh, that I felt encapsulated me um, throughout high school. I was involved in journalism and I was interested in computer science and I did like bi a business incubator like entrepreneurship and I did like some Stanford research like just researching like creativity and brainstorming so that's like more so in like psychology and business again but i didn't really have a way to blend those things together i never worked at like a journalism cs startup or something like that i never really went into one thing like super in depth so when i was pondering or brainstorming what to write my common app essay on i was like pretty lost and confused because it, it seems like I didn't really have one thing that really stood out to me from the beginning, like some people may have. And when I was going through my applications, I would be writing, um, I would go with my friends to like a coffee shop. We would all sit down and like work on essays together. And that was really nice. But um, it, it also felt like stressful because they, it seems like from the very start, they knew exactly what they wanted to write about. Like I had a I had two friends who were twins, so like they were like very unique in the sense that they could just write about each other. And I had a friend who was super passionate about nursing, and all of her extracurriculars were in line with pre med. So it was it was it felt a little like oh what do I write about? I don't really have anything one defining thing. Um, so in the end, um, my college application like process, I kind of just every time I went to a coffee shop, I kind of wrote down a bunch of ideas, um, maybe paragraphs or like fragments of an essay that I thought would be cool or that I thought would encapsulate me. And what I learned through that was that I didn't really have um, yeah, exactly. Like one thing to write about. I wanted to do something kind of out of the box where it was um, kind of like this mosaic essay. Um, so I ended up doing an essay about um, when I was little, 
um, I and my sister and I would go to my grandma's house a lot and we would make like these little mosaic tile stepping stone things um, and we would have like sharded glass and put it in the wet concrete and then it would dry and she has a bunch of them lined up in her garden I even like still continue doing it to this day um, with my grandma which is really nice and she like loves her garden so um, I kind of used that as a framework um, and then kind of throughout the essay I showed how I was a mosaic um, and I talked about a little bit about my diverse family because like my dad's side is very different from my mom's side. My dad's side, we have like farmers and, and like hillbilly people versus like my, my mom's side, it's like, um, on my mom's side, we have like uh, a philanthropist and also like a Google exec who's like super wealthy and like jumped out of like space from a balloon and it was like super cool. So yeah, every time I would go to like a coffee shop, I would be writing like bits and pieces of or like fragments of like sentences or paragraphs that I thought encapsulated my personality or my background. So maybe one time I would go, I would talk about how I haven't worn jeans since the first day of sixth grade. I just never have owned a pair of jeans ever since then. I thought that was kind of quirky and unique. Or maybe I wrote about journalism and the time that I was writing a story about the local juvenile hall and while I was interviewing one of the people we had like a lockdown and everyone had to evacuate and there were alarms blaring everywhere so i kind of wrote about some of these more unique experiences that i had um that i've had in my like just like life and in, in general that i thought kind of like helped shape my um my perspective or help shape my background or things that were unique to me that i felt like or i felt were important or i held close to my heart um so going into like how I kind of tied that in into being a mosaic um, on I had I wrote, first introduced like the little flashback to my grandmother's um, and how I was teetering on these like stepping stones and how I would make them with her um, and then I kind of delved into how I have like very diverse family perspectives um, and then I tied that into how all of those different per perspectives from my family have kind of shaped my thinking um, into kind of like I have some like adventurous side I have a quirky side I, I have a side that that enjoys nature in the outdoors and is adventurous. Um, so I kind of tied that all into, uh, yeah, just kind of like an umbrella of my personality and my interests. And then from there, um, I kind of talked about how this mosaic of me was, um, how a mosaic is maybe not a finer art, right? It's not like a, p a painting or like something like something not maybe aligned with the finer arts as I called it in my essay and I, I tied that back to how I think I'm more of not really like this masterpiece but I'm like more of a rough rough sketch of like of these different like shards and glasses and I have bits of spunk and sparkle um and it's kind of like <laughs> things and it's kind of like diverse and like quirky and like maybe weird interests kind of coming together but they work um and I think that was kind of like the ending of my essay um, when I was thinking about how to make sure that everything flowed and how to make sure that everything um, was actually tied together. Um, I talked about in the end how like yeah there's a lot of these diverse elements but they're all part of me and I'm also still evolving as a person and things are still being added to my mosaic um, and I'm totally fine with that. I'm fine being like kind of weird and disjointed and not not like super perfected um i'm like pretty rough on the edges and that's like i don't really mind i i think i still um embody a lot of like different perspectives as i said and like it's okay to have these like unique and kind of weird interests so that's how i kind of tied it in tried to tie it in like full circle um within the essay i was like super fun about it i i think my personality is like pretty fun in general and lighthearted. so i tried to insert like puns and like have like i think i was like oh want to talk about it and then I like use like some some other food puns like pear um <laughs> and it was kind of like almost a dialogue with the reader um just talking about like me and like uh stuff like that and I actually read my like app like the uh, admissions officers like file and they were like oh 
oh, it, like, it was a fun and kind of different essay, so that's what they said, um, and then they were also like, oh, she actually managed to have it come together at the end, so I think that's, like, a very important part of a mosaic essay, if you're trying to do that, like, you can have all these disparate pieces, but just make sure it all ties in together some way, and some, in, in like, some, yeah, in some way, um, and then I think, like, one other thing for my mosaic essay, um, it's, there's like you kind of have to find like a metaphor that works for you i think like the mosaic framework worked for me because i talked about these like cer uh like these ceramic mosaics that i had done when i was younger and then i could tie that into kind of like this whole framework um but i don't know whether that be pizza toppings or a thai chi or uh, a chai tea blend or whatever i don't know if you're trying to do this like like yeah just make sure it all comes together <laughs> in some way that's relevant to you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Next question, which was, what advice do you have for students who want to do this method? Because I feel like if executed well, it's an excellent essay, but to get it to that point is so difficult. Yes, I would definitely agree. Um, so a lot of like what I was thinking kind of throughout this whole process was, yeah, how do I make these disjointed pieces of me come together in a way that, one, it's like coherent and there's some unifying thread or some way that it's like within this framework that makes sense, right? Like there's still, like these these pieces or experiences or paragraphs are still disjointed in a way that it brings in different elements or aspects of myself, but it's still under the, umbre of, under the umbrella of, okay, this is like a mosaic and you're talking about how you're not aligned with like the finer arts or um, you wear like sweats every day to school and like you don't, <laughs> like you don't really care about how people like look at you or whatever. Um, and I think like that is, to have like a vehicle or a medium to tie everything together is just like one really important. Um, it's it's really hard to be just like, oh, I did X, and then like the next paragraph is like I did Y, and like having you as the unifying unifying thread is like <laughs> it's like a little um, it, it 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 doesn't really come together in a sense. Um, so I definitely think having like a full circle or having some sort of um, thing where you can say like, okay, here's the beginning and this ties into the end and then all the middle parts is still kind of under this umbrella. Um, I think that is important. Um, and then secondly, um, when I was writing my essay, first I actually did like a few different drafts of, the, of my essay. So one, I talked about how I kind of like fit in with the culture of Trader Joe's um, I don't know if they have that on really East Coast, but um, it was kind of like, at, in the end, it was kind of like similar to the, co it, there's like this um, Costco essay that gone to Stanford, like this one girl, but um, anyway, yeah, it's kind of famous essay, but um, I felt like, like when you're kind of trying to write like these disjointed or mosaic type essays, writing like a few essays to see, okay, is this really the best method or a best like unifying thread you can do because when I was doing the Trader Joe's essay I was like oh like this is cool like I'm all I'm like comparing myself to this brand and it's like um talking about food which I really like and I go to Trader Joe's so so often and stuff like that and it still would have been a really great essay but I just felt like when I played around with this mosaic essay I felt like it oh, it gave me more creativity and freedom to kind of talk about things like um yeah, you know, like bits of spunk and sparkle. Like, I don't know if I could have written that in this other essay. So also playing around with the frameworks and shoot and like seeing what really fits you best because it's really hard to just be right off the bat and be like, oh, I'm going to do this as my umbrella or my framework. And it, like, I think playing around with them really helped. Um, and then for, uh, thirdly, I think also just making sure your your uh, your framework, or, I keep saying framework or, or umbrella, but yeah, I don't know what, it, what else it would be called, but um, making sure that framework is relevant to you um, and also relevant to like the, the examples that you're providing is really useful because like I could have chosen, I don't know, I could have chosen like a kaleidoscope, for example. Like a kaleidoscope is cool. It has all these different colors and stuff like that, but that's not relevant to me. Maybe if I played, like, grew up playing with kaleidoscopes, I had a kaleidoscope, like, 
a collection or something like I could have been like oh these like multi multi-faceted colors like represent my personality what well, because xyz but like that doesn't relate to me really and it doesn't really relate to the examples that I would have had to show um so I felt like a mosaic like really embodied me just because I I had previous experience with it like it was something that I had done and and I could talk about in kind of this fun way and light hearted way as well. And then also it relates to me because um, I'm unrefined. I'm rough on the edges. I'm like a collection of these disparate pieces that come together and make something work. There's many different elements and aspects, factors there that relate to me, not just like one like kind of half-hearted like connection. Like it's not really trying to be forced. I feel like that's also another thing um, don't force it. <laughs> also, if you're trying to find this umbrella or framework, like it's it's hard to force. Like you, that I guess that goes back to trying out different frameworks because if you write an essay and you're like, oh, this is forced, like just don't be afraid to write it again with a new framework. Like it'll come together with the right framework. But if it doesn't, then maybe this style of essay isn't right for you. Don't force it. I would say is another thing. I think that's excellent advice, and I really like your point, especially with the kaleidoscope versus the little shards of glass that you mentioned, because in my mind, I was already thinking of maybe someone writing an essay starting off with, the kaleidoscope has many colors, I'm like a kaleidoscope, and then going into situ story one, and then story two, and then ending with, a kaleidoscope has many colors, that is me, and I will carry this forward. Yeah. That, that is an example of forcing. If anyone is watching mm -hmm. this, don't do it. But what, Kaylee yes. says about how closely tied she is with the example that she uses and how even the rough edges are related to her. That is super important, especially for this kind of mosaic framework. Because I, when I was writing my essay, I remember thinking, oh, a rainbow has many colors. Maybe I could <laughs> like have a color for each part of my experience. <laughs> Yeah, I to highlight that homeschooling that. versus public school versus this and that, and I tried reading it, and it just sounded so fake. I couldn't. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, definitely try many frameworks. Yeah, definitely. If it feels like cheesy to you, it's gonna feel cheesy to them. Like I think oh, part of this is like you have to be very authentic. I think that was one big thing that I noticed in like my application. Um, or like the the file my admissions file like all the readers were like oh like she really shows her personality she's very authentic like her personality shines through her essays and I think like that is also something like that I think people might try too hard to be something they're not or like try to like relate their life to like some like very big metaphor or something like just try to keep it like you like I think that's one other like big important thing like also don't be afraid to like be kind of lighthearted or or have your personality shine personality shine through you don't really know what is going through the minds of these admissions officers and it's really hard to tell like we're not taught this in school we're not taught like write an essay about yourself or write an essay with like your unique voice it's more so like oh write an analysis on this like blah blah how to kill a mockingbird but like I think that's like really important because this is the only way slash medium that the admissions officers are really going to get to know you, your voice, your perspective, your personality. So just like, yeah, be real with it. Like just be authentic. And like, if, if you like, for example, when I was talking about my puns, like if that's you, like if you use puns in your daily life, if you're a lighthearted person, like don't be afraid to let that shine through. I think that's like also kind of important. I don't know. I think some some students kind of overlook that or maybe they're scared to do it, but I would just say like, yeah, try, don't don't be afraid of doing that and also like it works for me. It doesn't work for everyone, but like don't be afraid to take that risk. You know? Thank you so much, Kaylee, for sharing all of your amazing advice. I honestly do not want to cut any part out, so I might just make a part one and part two. <laughs> um, we'll see. But um, for any viewers out there, if you found this video useful, don't forget to give this video a like <laughs> and also subscribe for more content like this. I will link Kaylee. Is it all right if I link your LinkedIn? And yeah. Okay. I will um, provide Kaylee's LinkedIn below if you want to check her out. And yeah, thank you so much for your time. It was great having you, Kaylee. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much.